So that's, in a nutshell, capitalism as a political ideology. Or, uh, I'm sorry, a political economy. But also, capitalism exists as an ideology. Now, of course, understanding ideology is not a, a simple or clear affair. Um, there are volumes and volumes written on ideology, and it itself right, could be not only a lecture, but a class or a life's pursuit of research. However, we can roughly understand ideology as the assumptions necessary for us to take action. So, as Marx said, it's ideology is that they do it, but they don't know that they do it. So what would a capitalist ideology look like? Well, capitalist ideology confronts us with a world that seems absolutely individual and rational. We have individual economic and political agents, right? People who make self-interested, or corporations who make self-interested uh, decisions. And then commodities exist as independent entities in their production, right? A commodity in its production is independent. Um, a commodity in its exchange is independent and a commodity in its consumption is independent, right? A big screen TV is, again, independent here, independent there, independent everywhere. Yeah, so. Um, and then the state, under capitalism, while imperfect and makes mistakes, uh, it just is there to attempt to mediate and prevent conflicts between individuals, right, and corporations, so things don't get out of hand. You know, we don't have anarchy. However, this is merely the ideological background to the real situation. Capitalism is itself a social relation which deploys vast forces and workers and repressive uh, you know, forces in, in the form of police, in the form of uh, soldiers, in the form of militias and guerrillas and instabilities and assassinations, all for the generation of surplus value. One doesn't have cap a, a capitalist if you don't believe in right, an individual system right, or a, an individual notion of right, wealth, that one individual can own capital. One doesn't have a, a factory line or an assembly line unless one believes right, in the overarching efficacy right, of the individuation of right, tasks. Right? So that individuals, everything should be split up and individualized. One doesn't look at your work, right? if you work in a factory or if you work in retail, right? as just either an hour of your life sold or a, a bunch of products made, a bunch of commodities made to disappear, unless one already ideologically buys in that the very core of everything is individual, rather than this huge social relation that makes it possible for us to have it, right? And so this is the functioning of, ide uh, of, of capitalist ideology. It makes us see an individual where, in fact, we have a collective, right? Any given individual on the factory line is unimportant and ineffectual. A factory works because it works in social labor. For the vast majority of people, you can only do your job if somebody before and if somebody after you does their job, right? And so this is the very meaning of social labor. Whereas previously, if you were working in a guild hall, right, you would do all the jobs yourself. You would, you know, take the leather, bend, if you're making shoes, right? You would bend the leather yourself, you would hammer the leather yourself, you would add laces or buckles, depending on what century it is, right? And that would all be done by you. It wasn't a social form of labor. It was artisan labor, right? It was an individual doing labor. But now, all of the, and again, so much more productive, so much more revolutionary, right? Capitalist labor, as it is now, right, is so much more effectual because it is social labor, right? It is a social arrangement. And it can put us collectively to work better, right, than a king can, right, basically shaking down individual serfs or individual guild halls, right? So again, the essence of capitalist ideology is to see an individual, either an individual product or an individual person or an individual corporation or an individual state, whereas in fact, it's a huge interconnected social arrangement, okay? 
Well, why, why does capitalism continue to function this, right? If it was just repression, it wouldn't fly. Repressive regimes are not always, but usually toppled, right, through resistance. Capitalism actually has one unique lever of power that trumps all the others. You can have, you can have the tanks, you can have the bombs, you can have the soldiers, you can have the guns, you can have the cops, you can have all the laws. But the real power of capitalism arises because they control the means of production. Because ideologically, we see property as individually owned, and, and right again, corporations are just shorthand for another individual, right? corporate individual. Because we see property as individually owned, it seems perfectly commonsensical that we should sell ourselves either to this factory or that factory or this retail shop or that restaurant. And so we have this ostensible freedom, this liberty to do whatever we want. But because the means of production are universally owned or increasingly owned by capitalists, right? They control the very ways in which we live, right? A factory farm is how most of us eat. And, and that's, that's, an, that's an important word, a factory farm, right? And who controls that? A capitalist. And so, in, in, and again, I know we're not on tendency, but I'm, I'm gonna take the Marxist track here. Um, so this separates us into a class, right? It separates us into the class that owns the means of production, that owns the factories, owns the farms, oh, and it separates us into a class of people who don't own anything, but are, or very little, as far as social relations go, except our bodies to sell, hour by hour, right? And these are the worker, the workers, or in other terms, the proletariat. So obviously I could continue to go on about, you know, the functioning of capital, but I, I, I this, I think, is the main uh, power of capitalism, right? Uh, the, the control of the means of production. So when you think of capitalism, one should never just think of, right, that Econ 101, supply and demand. One should realize capitalism is a unique form of production. It is a unique form of political economy. And it is um, a unique ideology. Um, and and I'll, I'll, I'll just wrap this up. We're also in a very dangerous state right now. Because as a matter of fact, historically, capitalism, for all of its flaws, and of course, I'm anti-capitalist, so I think it has many, capitalism has historically been linked to liberalism, right? The notion of individual liberties, individual freedom, individual rights. And a lot of the rights that we benefit from are outgrowths of liberalism and in, in, indirectly outgrowths of capitalism. Um, however, currently it seems that capitalism is changing its face. And we see the rising of capitalist societies, especially in Asia. And of course, right, you can debate the People's Republic of China um, right, as one of these, and I, I would say that it is, but also South Korea. Right? Also Thailand, also Singapore, also Taiwan, where you have repressive political regimes that um, continue right, the capitalist mode of production. Right? Economic liberty, right, in the sense of you know, unrestricted, uh, unfettered markets, but absolute political repression. So, again, this is an introduction uh, to capitalism. I, I, I can't do terribly much more than that. Um, but I think this would provide a good stepping stone for any anal radical analysis or to simply approach capitalism, right, um, if you enjoy capitalism, uh, from right, another perspective that will per perhaps be helpful or enlightening to you. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll wrap it up.